Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Mode. and today on Hot Mode, we are getting into our December 2023 fashion roast and review. We have a lot of celebrities to cover and if you are a channel member, remember there is a channel member exclusive version of this video which is much longer, but if you're not a channel member, A, you should join a dollar a month, it doesn't hurt. But this video is also very good, we're still going to break down some interesting looks, so buckle up. We're going to start off with ASAP Rocky. I want to talk about this look that he's wearing. Now this is from when him and Rihanna showed up in Aspen. Now ASAP is wearing a full Bottega look like full full Bottega look. He's also holding one of their babies. I know that their names are Riot and Riza, but like very cute little baby. But ASAP's full Bottega look to me and the fact that this is also like shot by paparazzi does remind me of the fact that ASAP did just front the Bottega campaign where him and Kendall Jenner were essentially like paparazzi style shot for the campaign. So I just feel like it's an intriguing element. He's wearing this cow print faux fur coat, which honestly I love, it's perfect. If you're gonna go to Aspen, which is where everybody goes to ski, or at least I assume people go to ski, I don't ski, I'm not a skier. I know French fry, pizza, that's it. I tore my ACL, my ski experiences, probably never gonna happen. I don't want my thighs to get big and muscly anyway, so. Life is good. It makes sense that you'd wear a little bit of a faux fur, you know, you want to wrap it up. When it's cold, it's cold, and you got to enjoy the cold while you can. That's my life mantra. He's wearing a cashmere hoodie underneath, again, by Bottega. It's not leather. I double check just to make sure, which I also love, could never buy because they should not be cashmere. But the thing that's really intriguing to me is the silver metallic intrecciato pants. Bottega's intrecciato is that sort of iconic weaving of leather pieces together. Pants cost like 11 grand. But at the same time, listen, somebody had to like hand weave those pants. Appreciate craftsmanship where it is. But honestly, I like the look. I like the fact that it doesn't all kind of go together. I think that's a really interesting thing that we are going to look at a bunch in this video is there are so many celebrities now, for the most part, I find them to be black celebrities that are like doing these styling choices that aren't sort of like full runway look. And I love it. I think it's really interesting. And I think it's something that I feel like we're going to start to see more and more come in in 2024, hopefully, where celebrities are not just like taking full looks off the runway and wearing them. Rather, they're actually like styling things and letting their stylists style things for them. But I just thought this was a really great example of that. I think ASAP looks cool. He looks great. It's something that if I had the ability, sure, I would. Why wouldn't I wear it? Next up, we have Andre Day, who's wearing Rahul Mishra. Andre Day is a fashion girly, .co. Now, Rahul Mishra, if you do not know, is the Indian haute couturier who shows during the haute couture season and also does these really beautiful, stunning, gorgeous embroideries. As we can see, she is wearing the color purple to the premiere of the color purple. Pretty smart. Again, I just think it's a really good way to go about the look from the red carpet. I also think it's smart that the shade is different than the, the carpet. I know that they probably didn't know the exact shade, but I do think that it all lines up pretty well here. This beautiful flower bodice piece is really cool. I think it's really intriguing. The fact that it's actually not really 3D. I would say it's 3D, obviously, in creation, but the image, the way in perspective it looks, it looks almost to be 2D. It looks to be flat, which I think is really intriguing. And then the matching tights are great. They aren't, they're not trying to take away from the flower bodice. They're not trying to overpower it. They're just there. They're complimenting, they're doing their thing, and then they're backing off and saying, you know what? I'm just here. I'm here to have a good time. I'm here to watch the movie. And I love it. It's great. It's beautiful. Next up, we have Anya Taylor-Joy, who is wearing Depetza. Now, Depetza is a great brand. Love it. Very much so. Very happy. Now, Depetza is a brand based in London, and they do this amazing wet look style. We've talked about Depetza for years at this point, but the thing that I think is really, really wonderful about Depetza is she constantly reinvigorates herself. She constantly is building different ways and different elements of her brand and still keeping a very signature sort of style and technique. People feel that it can get kind of old and things move in and out of the trend cycle. But I think that Depetza as a brand is doing a really good job of keeping that momentum going. And I think that's what you need to do as a young brand. I like the fact that Anya is wearing it. I like the asymmetrical top. I like the fact that it's wet. It looks wet. Because in reality, the way that this is constructed is I'm pretty positive the draping is done in a certain manner that gives the illusion that you threw water on very sort of diaphanous fabric and that's why at certain parts it looks like it's sticking to Anya's body but in other parts it looks like it's actually moving and draped and quite separated from the body. It's really cool. I like the fact that it also has this sling style on the skirt. I think the way that again it fits to the thigh is also really really beautiful. 
It's just a cool look. Next up, we have Ariana Grande, who is wearing Mirror Palais. Now, Mirror Palais is a New York-based brand. They make everything in New York. And in reality, it's usually like pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty minimal. But at the same time, it's very sort of, I don't want to say like coquettish, but it's very sort of feminine. It has a nice sort of feeling to it. Marcelo Guy, I really respect for always trying to make sure that his designs are made in New York. People knock him off. I don't really like the people knock him off because, again, like, don't knock off young designers. But I like the fact that Ariana Grande is wearing Mirror Palette. This off-the-shoulder strap that is in this silky little red is great. It's cute. It's wonderful. And then the fact that you have this beautiful fitted bodice that flares out right at the hip to a little bit of a L shape. It's cute. It works. I think that she was doing this for something to do with Christmas. I think that's what a lot of people have been doing recently is Christmas, Hanukkah, all those you know holiday things. And I think that Ariana Grande killed that. It looks great. I 100% know what we're going for. It fits her well. Happy. Next up, we have Beyonce, who is wearing Alaya. Now, Beyonce went to Brazil because she was doing more Renaissance work. And so in reality, she showed up and she was showing out. I love this Alaya look. I know that people are going to be like, it's kind of boring. It's all silver. We've seen that. Yes, like I get what you're saying. The silver we've seen a lot, but also like it's very Renaissance. So I understand it. But I do think the thing about this look in particular is I love this hood scarf cape thing. It's weird. It's different. It's cool. It's very much so reminiscent of Alaya. On top of it, if you think about it, Azadine Alaya, Grace Jones work together quite a lot. Azadine Alaya, Tina Turner work together a lot. I feel like Beyonce is paying homage to those women who she mentions and who she most definitely references when it comes to the Renaissance tour through this look and through working with Aliyah. On top of it, I just love the scarf. You can see it's a strapless fitted dress that is full, I believe, sequins. But the thing is, too, it's referencing Aliyah being the King of Kling, which covered in the sequins, I feel like, isn't something that we get to see a lot. We get to see a lot of this King of Kling reference in, like, black and brown and green and red and purple and blue, but very rarely do I think we see it with a sequin. So I like that sort of play. I think the ruching with a thigh slit is cool. It makes sense. Overall, I actually really like this. I think that, again, Beyonce's team understands references that are so deep that most people don't think are understanding the references that are so deep. Next up, we have Carrie Mulligan, who is wearing Celine. This is a custom creation. It's this blue sequin strapless gown that has these sort of faux sleeves, but they're not really sleeves. They're like faux bows, faux ribbons that drape around one side of the bust, well, I guess both sides of the bust, and sort of create this like faux sleeve experience. But they're also structured because if we look at the back, there is this sort of like scoop back situation, which again, fits her beautifully from the back. Like I'm obsessed with the back. And I think it's a really great example of like Eddie doing stuff that in reality is a little bit more exciting than what I think we normally get from Celine. But at the same time, it's still minimal. It's still pretty easy. It's pretty digestible. It's not going through and referencing this. Eddie doesn't really, I feel like, do that often. I like this. I think this is nice. I think it's chic. I think it's elegant. I think that there's a lot of people that could wear it. And I think that fits in with the Celine aesthetic. I think Carrie pulled this off. I know that Andrew McCommel is now styling her, or maybe he's been styling her. I don't know. But Long story short, he's also doing Margot Robbie. And so like this Carrie Mulligan fashion maestro experience, I'm ready to be conducted. Next up, we have Charles Melton. Now he is wearing Kenzo here. This is by Nigo. I love it. I think it's very chic. I like this double breasted style. I like the white lapel. I love the fact that it sort of curves in, comes out. It's really chic. I love little shorts capri wide leg pant or whatever we want to call this and then the boot and the sock it, like it all comes together really really well he looks very chic something that i've also noticed is i feel like charles melton is wearing a lot of asian designers we'll talk about his next look in a minute but i also think that's really fun i think that's really cool i think that's really exciting on top of that the look is good the look is chic i love this coat it's beautiful the way that it just sort of fans out ever so slightly the fact that you have the shorts underneath to reinforce that shape it's just good it's hot it's sexy. Next up, we have Elle Fanning. She's wearing Michael Kors. And again, I know everybody like gets on my case about Michael Kors. And like, I do. I like Michael Kors. Shoot me. Sue me. Get over it. I don't really care. I would like for this Michael Kors suit to feel younger, more youthful. And then this little halter tank top, I assume it's a knit of some sort, is perfect because she takes it off and like she posts this picture on Instagram. And I'm like, yes, hot girl's Michael Kors. Yeah, 100%. Like, this is what you need. I feel like we need more of this from the big MK to like showcase. Oh, yeah, no, like hot girls wear Michael Kors. They do. It's cute. This, this is a cute look. This is fun. It's simple. It's easy. It's minimal. But like, that's 
a-okay. You know what I mean? Like, I'm happy with that for Celine. I can be happy with that for Michael Kors. Weird thing, Michael Kors used a design for Celine. If you didn't know, now you know. I want more of this from like the celebrity moments from MK. I love a solid, beautiful woman of status and she is in an, of herself an experience, but I also think it's cool to have this sort of young, fun energy coming in as well. Next up, we have Emma Corrin, who is wearing a Mew Mew and they are serving it up. Now, Emma Corrin showed up to the premiere of The Crown because Emma Corrin did play Princess Diana in seasons, what, three and four of The Crown? Emma Corrin brilliantly recreates a Princess Diana look from 1985 that was by Jasper Conran. It's this white skirt suit. It has a white shirt. It has a black bow tie. So it's like a take on an all white tuxedo sort of suit. I love it. But Emma here took it, did a double rested blazer, which is beautiful by Mew Mew. It looks great. It looks wonderful. The team over at Mew Mew knows how to tailor. There is the white shirt, the black bow tie, love, sold, very content, very happy. But there is this sheer floor length skirt instead of that sort of lower shin length opaque skirt that Princess Diana wore. And I feel like it's a fun way to pay homage to the look while still being kind of interesting, kind of radical. We still get a little bit of a stocking moment. I think there's a high knee sock and there is a black pump as well. Well, very Mew Mew, which in reality, Mew Prada always sort of talks about how Mew Mew is like the younger version of herself. So that's why you see a lot of the sort of knee high socks with the little black shoes. I feel like they're probably a reference to being young and cool and chic and fun. It's just a really cool way of going about referencing a really sort of, I would say, niche -er look of Princess Diana's and making it your own. That's what we want. I don't want cosplay. I want you to update. Next up, we have Fantasia, who is wearing Sergio Hudson. This is what she wore to the premiere of The Color Purple. I love it. As much as I love The Color Purple, I love this polka dot skirt suit. Like, and this is a good skirt suit. I mean, you have this beautiful jacket. I mean, the waist is nipped. The shoulders are padded. The bottom of the jacket just sort of shuts out, gives a little peplum action. And then you have this form-fitting, beautiful polka dot skirt and it's floor length, it has a train. It's just, it's a really gorgeous look. I think it's really, really well done. I think it understands your proportions. I think that the graphic motif is really, really great, really, really beautiful. She just looks wonderful. And I think something like this could overpower certain people if it's not fit right, if the cut isn't good, or if they're just not selling it. And I think Fantasia and her stylist, they worked this one out. It looks amazing. Next up, we have Hailey Bieber, who is wearing Ferragamo. Now, this is a look from the fall 2020. Ferragamo collection, I believe. It is a draped red metallic dress that's ruched, and there is a red faux fur coat that's placed over top. I love it, honestly. I think it's cute. I think it's chic. I think it works. I think it's a great example of looks that you can wear that can double. I mean, listen, you could take the coat off when you go to the club, and you could still wear the dress and party already, and then when you're leaving the club, you could put the coat back on and then you're nice and warm and everything's wonderful and life is good. I love the length of it. I know it's very, very short, but I also think that that works. I think it's cool. I think it plays into this whole holiday sort of late December vibe. I also just love the texture of the drape. I love the way that the light reflects off of it. It really is beautiful. The ruching on it is stunning. The red faux fur coat also again like it's beautiful. It's a lovely color. I think that it works really, really well here too. I think also the way that this is shot, I know it might look like a MySpace picture to some people, but I also think that might be working for me. For me, it feels kind of reminiscent, kind of beautiful, kind of late 2000s chic. It reminds me of a MySpace profile picture, and that's okay. I'm good with that. Next up, we have Halle Berry serving it up in Ellie Saab, Haute Couture. Yeah, sold, 100% happy. I mean, this dress is stunning. It's fully sheer, or not fully sheer, at least the bodice and the sleeves are sheer. The rest of the dress, opaque with black panels instead of sheer panels, but it's covered in this beautiful gold and silver embroidery that just runs throughout the gamut of the dress. I mean, the shoulders on it. I mean, like the tailoring on the, on the bodice is beautiful. I mean, the shoulders, I really, I could stare at them all day. The collar, stun, hot, sexy, neat want, would die for. I also love the fact that it creates this sort of oval shape, almost like a frame in the gold and silver embroidery around the bust area too. The skirt is perfectly fitted to her, the way that it moves down and this sort of, I don't want to say art deco because I don't really feel like it's art deco. I feel like it's more like art nouveau kind of vibe. It's a stunning dress and the little bell sleeve, happy, content. Halle Berry knows what she is in fact doing at all times. So I thank her. Next up we have Catherine 
Princess of Wales. And she wore this blue look to attend Christmas at the church that the royals all go to. I love it. She ate. She ate it up. Kate looks good. I'm really sold. People could be mad at me saying Kate. I'm going to say Kate. Okay? So deal with that. The coat dress is coat dressing. The tailoring is tailored. It is immaculate on her. Like, it really, truly is a beautiful coat. I don't know who it's by. Maybe it's McQueen. I don't really know. The color is striking. It's beautiful. It's almost like an Eve Klein blue, but not there. Because, you know, I feel like that would be too on the nose for the royals. I think the headpiece works. I think the black turtleneck with the black boots. It's a dark blue turtleneck. I, I like that even more. The black I was fine with, but I think that that really, really dark blue really works as a good way to not show off things that we don't want, not showing off the crown jewels, but I think that it complements it really, really well. Charlotte looks cute in her little dress too. Very happy, very solid. Love it. Next up, we have Kendall Jenner who wore 16 Arlington. It was hot. Sorry, it was real hot. This is what she wore to the Kardashian Christmas party. I could get into the Kardashian Christmas party and the white snow or whatever, and it's bad, and I, I agree. This black fitted dress with the two bands of fur at the tippity top and the bitty bottom, she's doing it. I'm very happy. I'm very content. I really enjoy looking at this. That's not something I often say when it comes to like Kendall Jenner fashion moments, but she's delivering. She looks like a background character in The Grinch. She looks like somebody that could give Martha May Houvier a run for her money. That's not something that I say often, but I think this is the truth in this case. Like, she looks beautiful, stunning, gorgeous, wonderful, amazing, effervescent. See, if I was given the option between the sherry in the barrel of a St. Bernard dog as I was freezing on the top of a mountain or looking at the picture of Kendall Jenner to warm me up, I pick Kendall Jenner in this moment. That says a lot. Next up, we have Lady Gaga, who showed up to the Maestro premiere wearing this black Alexander McQueen suit. Black, single-breasted suit jacket with a flare pant, and there is this silver embroidery of, I believe, flowers, possibly lilies, possibly orchids. I don't think it's actually orchids. I also am really, really intrigued to see if Lady Gaga continues to wear Alexander McQueen now that Sarah Burton has left. While she did have a relationship with Alexander McQueen, himself. A lot of her work also sort of played in with Sarah Burton. And so I'm really, really intrigued to see what that new relationship looks like if that relationship continues. I'm sure it will, but I just would be intrigued by it. Suit is pretty simple. It's not amazed by it. I'm not overwhelmed by it, but I feel like Gaga is in a new era much more now than ever before. She's doing sort of really easy, beautiful 30s, 40s kind of glam styles. I don't hate it. I get it. I understand it. I don't think you're ever going to get that era of avant-garde really ever again. I always want it. Next up, we have Nicki Minaj. We got to talk about it. Pink Friday 2. I know that I didn't like the Vogue cover and people were mad at me about that. And that's fine. And I say what I say because I have always liked Nicki Minaj's work. 100%. Without a doubt. I'm going to keep talking about her work. So here's the thing. I love that Nicki Minaj on the stream of Kai Sinet, who is one of the big streamers. If you've watched any of the streamies videos, Kai Sinet shows up to the streamies. And we've talked about Kai before, but he's a very big streamer huge, has a major platform, and I think Nicki Minaj is very, very smart for going on his stream because A, it created, again, one of those little Nicki Minaj cultural moments where you're watching things and enjoying and laughing if you like Nicki Minaj, but also I think she's exposing herself to a different audience, and also I think live streaming more and more is becoming a way that people really do interact with the internet and celebrities and, you know, influencer culture and things like that. So the fact that she showed up on the live stream wearing Daniel Lee's Burberry, and it was this pink and purple and yellow look. I loved it. I thought it was exciting. I am confused why Burberry is not dressing her more often because they really should. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think she could definitely fill the role that is currently missing in terms of something exciting over at Burberry happening. I need more of this because like this was good. This was hot. This was sexy. We then had Nikki in this other look. It was this Alexandre Vautier moment. It was a neon yellow fur coat. I don't know if it's faux. If it is faux, it's very good impression faux. But it is almost floor length. It has a hood. It's amazing. It's great. I it's, be it's a beautiful coat. I'm sorry. The jeans and the emerald green Luck of the Irish Lucky Charms boots that are by Givenchy, the shark boot that are bedazzled. I'm kind of also obsessed with, again, when I was talking about ASAP before, I think this is what I mean where I'm starting to see, or I feel like we are starting to see celebrities wear a bunch of things that like don't really match and they're not really, you know, full look runway, 
but it's more styling. And I do love that. I do think it's something that really like should be done a lot more. I do think it's something that is very much so, at least in my mind, a little bit more related to black artists and also rap, hip hop culture and the way that those artists work in those worlds. There is just something about it that I, I love. It feels like 90s, early 2000s, before the fashion celebrity machine became a thing. And listen, I love the celebrity fashion machine. That's how this all works. But at the same time, I like the idea of this. I like the idea of celebrities styling themselves and really actually not having a full concept look from the runway that's brought over and adapted. I, I think that these kind of things can be cool and can be fun, can be different and open our minds, me, me first and foremost, to what celebrity fashion should be. Next up, we have Nikki wearing this gold Dolce & Gabbana coat and a Louis Vuitton by Marc Jacobs gold monogram bag and a pair of Scaparelli gold toe shoes. And I believe that is a Chanel headscarf. Here's my thing. I wish that the jacket wasn't Dolce for obvious reasons. I do personally wish that it was in fact Prada because remember that iconic Prada gold wrinkle collection? I just feel like that would be better, but okay. What I will say though, again, is like, these are the moments that I'm talking about where these are all different things. They're not runway pieces that are current. I would say maybe besides the Scaparelli shoes, but even then, I feel like we also always talk about there needs to be a little bit more thought, a little bit more intellect into what we're doing. And I feel like we're seeing that a lot more with celebrities. I like this avenue that we're also taking as well. All right, my last Nicki Minaj look that we'll talk about is this pink fur look with these black sequin leggings, the pink fur boots, the white tank top, like I love. Funny enough, this reminds me of Cameron, the iconic fur look. I will also say that there's a deli that I go to frequently, and there's a picture of Cameron in a brown fur hood coat, and I'm like, mm. So I do walk by it quite often being like, Cameron, are you in there? Can I see you? I'd like to see you in a full fur. Right now, it's like January, December, February. These are like the prime Cameron fur months. So I would like for that to happen for me, personally. I love it. Pink Friday, it makes sense. I get it. I completely understand. The fur hood, wonderful, beautiful. Nikki looks great. Happy. Next up, we have Rihanna. And she was in Aspen with ASAP Rocky. Obviously, we can see ASAP's jacket and his little silvery pants there. But the thing that I do find really interesting, again, which is something we've seen a lot throughout this video, is her blazer is Saint Laurent. Her hoodie is Bottega Veneta. It's the same cashmere hoodie that ASAP is wearing. Her jeans are by R13, and then she's wearing boots by the brand Old Gringo, and they're these blue suede boots. They're little cowboy experiences. I like the look. I think it's fun. I think it's easy. I think it's simple. I think it's clean, classic, whatever. But Rihanna is somebody that is very pro layering a bunch of different brands that aren't runway collective styles or whatever together in her little looks out and about. And I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's nice. I think it's chic. And I just feel like it's something we're going to see a lot more in 2024. Let's talk about this Bellman dress. I do really like this. I think it's a beautiful dress. I like the sharp shoulder on it. I like the exposure of the cleavage area. I do think that the fit of the dress at the bodice is really sweet. I think the rose on it, great. The ruching, it's 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 intriguing. It's nice. It's a beautiful dress. I, I, I like it, you know? It feels very rom-com, love story, look appropriate. Great. Next up, Taraji P. Henson, and she is wearing Vlora Mustafa. It is a look that she wore for the premiere of The Color Purple. It's a black corset with a black silk skirt. It's a mermaid style. And then it has that white draped swag thing, which I feel like I'm seeing a lot more now and now. Like we're seeing a lot of it. Whereas like before it was kind of fun. It was kind of nice. And it was like, oh, oh. And it seems like it's trending. And the thing is, I don't mind it. Like, I think the look looks nice. I think it's cute. I think it's chic. I think working of the mermaid skirt. I think the mermaid skirt is really, really working on her. I like the sheer exposure of the boning. Even the white drapes, like, they work. They don't really clash. They're not offensive to the eye. But mm, I do love the jewelry styling. I love that little bulgari necklace. I think it's very elegant. I think it really, really works and plays well into the movement and the swirl and, and the curve of it all. Overall, like the look it's nice it's really sweet looks great am i really gonna remember it no next up we have taylor swift she's wearing a cleo pepiat sequined dress or crystallized dress i don't know i think it's crystallized and it has little clouds and a moon on it and like i like the dress i think it looks nice on her it was also for her birthday party so like i'm not expecting like red carpet thought out blah 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 blah, blah. i wouldn't have gotten that anyway but i'm not expecting it you know what i mean low expectations 2024 
mantra, that's my New Year's resolution. I have very low expectations for everybody. Who's disappointed if I have high expectations? Me. Here's the thing. I do like the dress. I think it looks nice. It's something that she's wearing for her birthday party to go and enjoy with her friends. And I think she looks lovely. I do. Genu- like, that's a genuine thing. It's not even like a birthday present. That was, I genuinely thought, oh, I like that dress on her. I wish you'd wear more stuff like that. And next up, we have Zendaya. Here's the thing. With the new film, Challengers, coming out soon-ish, Zendaya is showing up in a Scaparelli look from the Runway Collection. Again, here's the thing. She wore the lobster ruched skirt. I love her. Sydney Sweeney, take notes. It's this lobster style, which in reality sits right over the kind of cooter area. But if you didn't know, Elsa Scaparelli worked with Salvador Dali and Salvador Dali made that lobster phone. And Elsa Scaparelli then took a lobster and she put it on a dress. So it's a reference. Daniel Roseberry knows his references. And the thing that I think is really, really cool about this look is it plays not only into the history of the brand, surrealism, the 1930s, things like that, but Instead of just, like, doing a lobster print and calling it a day, the man said, no, 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 we're going to concoct a lobster, like a full, pretty anatomically real-looking lobster, although I don't like lobster, so, like, I'm, I'm not an expert on lobster anatomy, but it looks pretty realistic to me out of fabric and place it over top and then ruche the skirt. I love it. It's fantastic. It's amazing. And it's also why I'm very excited for Zendaya to come back because it's been a little bit of a desert. People have delivered, but at the same time, not everybody does it like Zendaya and Low Rush. So I'm very excited for 2024. I think it's going to be a good year. So that is the end of our December 2023 roast. Let's talk about a best and worst. This will be for the channel members. Let's talk about best and worst. I'm going to give it to Carrie Mulligan in the Celine dress, Charles Melton in that Kenzo. Fantasia and Sergio Hudson, Kendall Jenner, you know, that 16 Arlington moment was in fact a moment. Nicki Minaj and that gold I really loved. Nicki Minaj and Burberry will stay with me for quite some time. Zendaya, definitely. I'm going to say Sydney Sweeney in that Oscar de la Renta. You know what I mean? She was nice. Also, I'm adding in Emma Corrin in that Mew Mew moment. Sold. As for worst, I'm going to say Emma Stone, unfortunately. I think, I think that might be it. I don't think there was anything that was, like, that bad, really. Nothing really hurt my feelings, you know? Nothing really broke my soul. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next video, and TTYL.